Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our August 6th Webster Central School District Board of Education regular meeting. Would you please stand and join us as we say the Pledge of Allegiance? Board members, you've had a chance to examine the agenda for tonight. Are there any alterations or additions or corrections to the agenda? Seeing none, may we please have a motion to accept the agenda? So, so second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries and the agenda stands as written. We do provide an opportunity for members of the public who have registered with the board clerk to address the board at this time. We ask that the comments be brief, no longer than five minutes, and that they be related to school matters. If you have a personnel matter, whether directly or indirectly, it will not be discussed in public. And if you do have a personnel concern, it can be addressed in writing to the board. And with that being said, is there anyone in the audience tonight that wishes to address the board? Seeing none, we'll move on. We have a new director of fine arts. Karen, would you like to make the introductions? Thank you, Mike. <coughs> I am proud uh, this evening to recommend Mr. Michael Roller as our new director of fine arts. Uh, Mr. Roller, if you can come on up, and Dr. Siebert, if you don't mind coming up as well, that'd be great. So, as many of us, as many of us know, Dr. Siebert is retiring in a few weeks, I think September 1st, correct? Um, and over the last few months, we have gone through an extensive uh, search uh, process, and we were very lucky and, um, again, very, very honored to uh, be able to identify Mr. Michael Roller as our new Director of Fine Arts. And even luckier still, Mr. Roller certainly knows Webster's culture. He has been here for uh, approximately a decade, 10 years. Um, started at uh, Schrader High School for two years and then for the last eight or nine has been uh, one of the choral directors and general music teachers and chorus teachers at Willink Middle School. And um, my daughter was lucky enough to have Mr. Roller a few years ago and um, I know what uh, an amazing professional he, he has been and what an amazing asset he's been to our district. So Mr. Roller has been transitioning with Dr. Siebert over the last few weeks and the transitioning gets a little bit more intense uh, over the next uh, three weeks before Dr. Siebert uh, bids us all uh, adieu. Um, <laughs> and uh, Mr. Roller, we are uh, very pleased to have you join us, uh, join our, our, uh, our team up at district office. And um, if you'd uh, like to say any words or if you'd like to reflect, that'd be fantastic. Thanks. I'm really excited to uh, be part of the team and uh, there's so many people that have supported me and influenced me over the years that I'm going to get to work with in a new capacity, and that's exciting. The, the best part about it is the support that already exists for the arts in Webster, and I know that sustaining the programs that we have here uh, is going to be one of the, the drivers to what I get to do with our wonderful staff that we have here in the district, and then always searching for the new opportunities that we can give our students to experience and learn more about themselves through the arts. So that's, that's the part that I'm really going to get excited about. So I thank you for the opportunity. So um, before uh, the board acts on the recommendation to, um, to have you appointed as our new fine arts director, um, I'd like you to perhaps introduce your family because uh, you, yep. you, you brought the brood here tonight. I did. <laughs> uh, my wife, Kelly, and uh, our oldest, Cora, and Benjamin and Evelyn and Aubrey. <laughs> so oh, my cheering section at uh, a lot of different yeah. things. And so. That's fantastic. So, well, we promise not to keep you so busy that 
you get out of balance. Remember, it's always about family first. So, but you also know that <laughs> when when it's concert season, um, and I'm sure I'm sure your wife Kelly is used to that because as a music teacher, you know what it's like during yep. during those con- uh, those concert seasons. So, um, but uh, again, Michael, we are so happy to have you join us, um, and uh, Johanna. Um, we are we have been incredibly blessed to have your leadership over the last over the last 10 years and uh, we can't wait to uh, and we know that uh, that Michael is was probably one of your first hires I would imagine or shortly thereafter so um, you have been his mentor I'm sure for the for his entire career here in Webster so we couldn't think of um, a better selection so congratulations and um, board uh, I think this needs action yes we do Welcome, Michael, and thank you, Joanna. All right, board, may we please have a motion to accept the appointment of Mike Roller as Director of Fine Arts? Oh, that's right. Uh, that's okay, you have a quorum. Yeah, we have a quorum. Yeah, you have a quorum. We have a quorum. Okay. Yes. You can when, pretend. Right. You can pretend. Okay. <laughs> thank you. All in favor of the motion? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. <laughs> Welcome, Michael. Welcome. Thanks for, thanks for coming out tonight, Michael. Thank you, Kelly. All right, Carm, superintendent report. Yes. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Mike. This is a very exciting time of the year because although it's still summer, there are so many of our Webster teachers, staff, and students that have been working hard to gear up for the new school year which begins on Wednesday, September 2nd. That's in 27 days. It's the very first time we've ever started school with kids, with students, before Labor Day. So many of our teachers meet throughout the summer to spend time on professional development and preparing for new courses and curriculum. And our schools are filled with summer camps, enthusiastic kids. And although I still can't wait for all 11 of our schools to be filled with the energy that comes from the voices and and enthusiasm of our students i know that um, if you were to talk to many of our students um, they think that summer is still too short and that 27 days isn't nearly enough but i know from the parents point of view 27 days is probably 26 days too long so um, we can't wait for september 1st a good example of uh, a summer of summer camps is our marching band camp which has been going on this week and will also be going on next week and you see some pictures of our band members in action right here. Under the direction of Steve House, our students are learning new music and choreography in preparation for what promises to be an outstanding year for the pride of Webster. They are also preparing to host a bottle and can drive and an electronics recycling event that is always a big fundraiser for the band this Saturday, August 8th. So stop by Webster Schrader High School anytime from nine to five and they'd be happy to take those items off of your hands. Or you can also call the Marching Band Hotline, 234-8684. You see the number in the bottom right corner of your screen. And if you call that number, you can schedule a pickup. And it's a great way to support our marching band, the Pride of Webster. While I'm on the subject of our students, I want to congratulate one particular student who has spent his summer getting a taste of what college may be like. Uh, Marcelo Luciano. Marcelo was accepted into Carnegie Mellon University's National High School Game Academy. Marcelo, who will be a senior at Webster Schrader High School this year, was one of 60 students from across the country that, um, that, was, that was accepted and he got to explore a curriculum that they are interested in and in pursuing in college. In this case, Marcelo was introduced to video game programming, 2D and 3D art design, audio production, and even game psychology. He and a team of other students spent a portion of the six-week program rebuilding a video game from my generation, Donkey Kong. Congratulations, Marcel, and on your very productive and educational summer. And Marcelo's is just a snapshot of the many educational experiences our students participate in during the summer uh, vacations. Lastly, please look for your community back-to-school newsletter, which should arrive in all of our homes in in probably the next week to 10 days. This newsletter is filled with helpful information about the school year, so be sure to look for it in your mailbox. To our newest Webster Schools family, 
If your students are just beginning with our district, please make sure that you've registered them for their 15-16 school year. And for more information regarding the registration process, please visit the district's website, websterschools.org, and click on the Central Registration Quick Link on the left-hand side of the page. Also, keep checking in to the district's website, along with Facebook and Twitter, for all of our important school updates. And uh, you can follow us on Twitter at Webster Schools Proud, and you can also follow me at Super Webster. Um, I cannot wait uh, to get started with teachers on Tuesday, August or Tuesday, September 1st, and with students on Wednesday, September 2nd. So that ends my report. Thank you, Karen. Back in June, board member Paul Benz, because of his work situation, resigned from the Webster Board of Education. After taking applications for this position, the Board of Education, according to Educational Law 1709, has selected Linda Diogardi to fill this vacant seat until the term expires in June of 2016. At this time, we need a motion to appoint Linda to the vacant seat. May we have a motion, please? Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. So, Linda, I would like now to give you the oath of office. Um, you do solemnly swear that you will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of New York, and that you will faithfully discharge the duties of the office of member of the Webster Board of Education according to the best of your ability. Congratulations. Now you get to vote on things. <laughs> oh, and the first one up is going to be taxes. <laughs> well, we, with the board, we do need to finalize the tax rate, and the tax rates are based on the final tax rolls that are certified by the district, namely Brian. And um, would you like to add some details to that point, Brian? Sure. Um, the first thing that you have there is a comparison to what we were projecting on our May 7th budget hearing. Uh, we came in a little under the valuation increase. Uh, we projected about a 1.5% increase in May. Um, w when the rolls were certified, we were at 1.3, so two tenths of a percent off. Um, and that, that equated to a little bit of a higher uh, overall rate increase. Uh, the other area I wanted to specifically point out for um, the district members living in the town of Ontario, they had an equalization rate shift from 100% to 97%. Um, the assessor um, relayed to me that this is going to be a one-year change until they do a town-wide uh, reassessment. Uh, the state came in and mandated they drop the equalization rate. So that kind of um, skewed their, their rate increase compared to everybody else because of that. Uh, makes, makes their share of Wayne County in our district a, a lot larger, uh, hence the one-year blip uh, with their rate increase going up significantly higher than the other towns. Any questions on that that I could clarify? Or is that, that's usually a, a difficult, the equalization rate changing and how it could swing uh, tax rates. We have how many families in Ontario? There's not that many. It, there's not that many. I only, from an overall perspective, it's about $1.6 million in assessed value. So it gets heightened even more because of the size in comparison to everybody else. Mm -hmm. Seeing no questions, then, we'll need a motion to accept the tax rates. Thank you. A second, please. Second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. So just a okay. quick clarification, um, our taxpayers will be reimbursed for any change in the tax, in the actual tax? Th that's an excellent point, yes. No, no matter what the increase was, um, minus a couple other factors, um, if you've put in a new pool or something, the state's not going to reimburse your assessed value for going up uh, for that. But anything over last year, um, if you stayed uh, with a stable baseline, you will get that refunded to you. If I remember correctly from last year, it came, the check came end of September, early October? Sometime in the fall. Um, yep. Okay. So, and, 
it, it, it could be, depending on where you are, it could be as, as late as the first week of November. And just to, re to remind uh, all of our stakeholders, the reason why we qualify for a rebate of any tax increase is because our budget um, was below our tax cap. So no, we, does it have to be the school and the town? No, it's, it's just, just each taxing entity. Each taxing right. yep. entity. So okay. because we were below the tax cap, um, our tax, uh, our taxpayers will receive the There's school tax increase. If there's, if, when they see an increase, they'll receive that back sometime Correct. in late September to mid October. Excellent. Okay. okay. Thank you. Now let's move on to the reserve transfers. Brian, would you please explain that? Sure. Um, this is. In a correlation with adopting the warrant, you also have to complete all your reserve transfers. And in June, I had uh, given you some estimated uh, transfers of what we could be doing uh, with undesignated fund balance. Unfortunately, now that we've closed our books and audited this week, there, there are no funds to transfer. Um, so we are going to be right below our 4% um, in a 386, 39 area. Uh, when we finish off the year. Uh, we've had some significant increases in some expenditure areas this year where our fund balance has stepped in and uh, taken the hit for that. And also our revenues on the state side with timing of BOCES aid uh, didn't come um, as we had hoped it would have and what we planned for it, uh, due to delays in ordering. So that shorted us on the revenue side a little bit. So those two things uh, coupled together um, left us right under the 4%. So there will be no transfers. I just wanted to clarify that change. I initially thought at the end of June we'd have uh, some funds, but once uh, June f finalized and we took a look at it in more detail, uh, I'm, I'm recommending that there are no transfers this year. That makes it easy. Since there's no transfers, there's no motion. Thing to vote on. Okay. So we will, however, ask you to give our report for, is it May or June? June. June. So we have, uh, this week is our audit. Uh, we're officially closing the books on 1415. So that has gone very, very well. Uh, they were scheduled for five days. They're only going to be here for three because everything is in order. Uh, not a lot of questions. They're just doing their due diligence, going through everything. So we should have a very uh, quick turnaround on, re on a draft report for the audit committee coming up in the beginning of September. Um, with that said, June is always our low cash flow month. Uh, state aid does come in, but a lot of our June is deferred. Our BOCES aid actual payment for 1415 doesn't <coughs> show up until actually August of 1516. So we're running a little behind on the revenues because most of them have come through and our expenditures really tick up in June. A lot of that has to do with payroll, end of the year payouts. Um, so those increased. So even though we're in a, we're still in a fine cash flow position, you will notice on your month to month comparisons, this is our lowest level that you've seen um, in our bank accounts. Um, and that is really the reason why because of the payroll payouts in June. Uh, secondly, I uh, just want to point out, uh, we are, um, I could happily report, um, we will have a small surplus in our school lunch fund this year um, for right around eight $9,000 uh, that would turn out in, in the black. Um, so big kudos to Mark and his staff uh, for the work they've done to turn around some of the negatives we've had over the past couple of years. That's good news. That is, it is great news. All right, any questions from the board? May we please have a motion to accept the treasurer's report for June? Thank you, a second? Second. Thank you, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. As required by New York State Educational Law, the Board of Education must review and approve the Webster Central School District Code of Conduct each year. This code of conduct clarifies the standards for the behavior that is expected for all members of the school community in order to preserve a safe and supportive learning environment. So Shelley, anything to uh, tell us about on the uh, code of conduct? For this school year, we are not making any recommendations for any revisions. Um, the past two years, we have uh, made revisions that would support our Dignity for All Students Act. Um, and this year, as we have, we continually, we meet monthly with all of our DASA coordinators and for our care team um, support staff. 
and um, we review our behavior data, we align that and talk about our code of conduct, and right now we are feeling that it's meeting and serving the, um, the needs for the district. With that said, there is some new legislation coming on board to support um, transgender students. And so that is something we're going to be looking at. We need to review um, the code of conduct to make sure that it is aligning and supporting all of the, the regulations. So next year we might see some changes. And maybe even possibly this year we may want yeah, to revise right. it. it. Correct, time. correct, right. But yes. circumstance within the district and you do have language in there that is protecting of that. We so, currently do, right. yes. It's just, mm -hmm. um, it may be embellished is what you're thinking. Correct. Mm -hmm. Any other questions or comments from the board on the code of conduct? I'll make a motion. Well, Thank we you don't have much. to make a motion because mm -hmm. we're not changing anything. Well, we do have to readapt. You have to accept that. Oh, okay. We have to readapt it. Yeah. Okay. So the motion is mistaken. there. A second, please. Thank you, Linda. All in favor of <laughs> adopting the code of conduct? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. <laughs> Might as well stay up, Shelley, because we're going to talk about Medicaid. Uh, in trying to be in compliance with the federal and state laws relating to the Medicaid billing for school supportive health services and other programs. We were looking at a document that ensures the procedures are in place to properly document and accurately bill the services that are rendered. I believe that's how I read the whole thing. So anything to, else to add to that? There is not. Again, we are not re recommending any changes to the Medicaid compliance plan. The program is, is designed to ensure that um, we are properly documenting and billing um, for Medicaid services or Medicaid payment. Um, we did have... Um, a desk audit um, this year and as the previous year we had a state audit and we did very well um, and this year again we did very well and that really is and I said it last year it's thanks to Kim Ganley um, and her oversight um, because she truly understands all of the nuances um, of the billing aspects around Medicaid because it primarily focuses on uh, speech and language mm -hmm. occupational therapy and physical therapy services Okay, even though there's no change, we still have to adapt. So, I mean, we have a motion, please, to accept the Medicaid Compliance Program. Second, Anne? Yes, thank you. All in favor? Aye. Yes. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Shelley. Thank you. Now, the Board of Education's desire is to have an innovative, dynamic, and diverse learning environment, inspiring all students to attain a strong academic foundation, to model positive character skills, and to fulfill their individual potential by acquiring the essential skills to be ready for success as a learner, as a worker, and as a citizen. We want our schools to be guided by clear goals, which will allow them to stay focused on what we believe to be essential. So board members, you have the draft of the district goals. We'd like to approve them tonight. Are there any questions or comments or additions to those goals? We did during our workshop in the summer and some of the work done by specific board members to help reward things, uh, Ann and, and Mike Deedy. Uh, appreciate your help on those. All right, may we have a motion, please, to accept or adopt the 2015 2016 Board of Education district goals? Second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Tom, I believe you'll be going to the NISBA convention in October through the New York State School Boards Association. That's correct. And Anne, I believe you are also interested. Yes. Uh, I know, Sue, you probably aren't. No. You, you, you probably aren't. All right, then it's easy. Um, then you'll make the arrangements. Okay, that takes care of that. Um, I sent out recently uh, an idea of elementary board liaison assignments. Um, if it's okay with you, Ann, I would like to stay at Clem South and that would put you at state. Okay. okay? And then the rest would be the same time. You'll be going to DeWitt and you're at Schlegel mm -hmm. and, and, and Plank South. Okay? Then we're all set with that. Uh, do we, I don't think, we, do we don't need a motion for that, do we? No. We just 
that's what that's what we'll be doing. Okay. You also had the opportunity board to take a look at the consent agenda, which consists of the minutes of our meetings, the personnel actions that the district is taking, the recommendations on the Committee on Special Education, as well as the recommendation of the Committee on Preschool Special Education. We also have a universal pre-kindergarten program approval, and lastly, we have a bid for bagels. <laughs> That was a good one to open. I know. <laughs> of course, we never get a bagel to test to see which one we like better. Actually, we did. did we? Oh, it's we been a Actually, we did. Oh, yes, we did. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> we, we found out which ones we did, didn't we like. Didn't like. <laughs> <laughs> All right. May we please have a motion to accept the consent agenda? A second, please. Thank you, Linda. All in favor of the consent agenda? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. I do want to point out that we do have a summer retreat next Wednesday. It will be upstairs, 8 o'clock in the morning. Our uh, next regular scheduled meeting isn't until September 10th, although it is, let's see, you said 27, so it's 35 days away. <laughs> yes. It's five weeks away. Yeah. Mr. President, a point of personal privilege, please. Yes. Thank you. Um, it's my honor uh, as an officer of New York State School Boards uh, representing uh, all of the districts in the state uh, to present an award to one of our board members. Um, education uh, is important for all of us. It's a lifelong journey. And uh, one of our members, our president, Mr. Suffoletto, has uh, achieved from the uh, Leadership University of New York State School Boards Association, the Lifetime Achievement Award uh, for his um, ongoing education uh, in a combination of attendance at many workshops, uh, webinars, uh, legal events, participating in legal, uh, some of our legal events. Uh, so the board, uh, the School Board Association, would like to give you this plaque and this pen uh, and if I may take a moment NISBA School Board Association Leadership University Board Lifetime Achievement to Michael Suffoletto Webster School Board in participation in New York State School Board's leadership development opportunities totaling over 500 points this year 2015 Timothy Kramer and Lynn Lenhart. Michael, it's my honor to congratulate you. All right, 500 points, Linda, here you come. <laughs> they don't come easily. <laughs> no. All right. A lot thank, of effort there, Mike. Thanks. Thank you very much for that. Uh, I guess that takes oh, okay I just wanted to mention because we've all become so fond of Lorenzo's liaison reports and I don't know how many of you happen to see Missy Rosenberry's column today but he is part of a band called Main Street Lights that includes all Webster either grads or students and they actually are having a release party for a CD at Water Street Grill on Friday and it sounds like a great CD and uh, um, Lorenzo is on piano and we've also heard the primary vocalist Lucia Rose I believe is her name she is just amazing so but because it's at Water Street Girl you do have to be 16 but it's at um, Friday night at 7 o'clock so anyone out there that is a fan of some of the talent of the music groups might want to stop in or at the very least get their CD and their CD is called Manifest Destiny. I wonder if he has that song he did at graduation on it. I don't know. Oh, okay, that'd be good. Okay, anything else for the good or the order? What's the, I'm sorry, what's the name of the band again? Main Street Lights. And that, if you just Googled that, you could get Actually, you could go, if you look at Missy's column in the DNC today, yeah. or the, her blog, you can read all about it. Great. All right. Then may we have a motion to adjourn, please? So moved. All, all in favor? Aye. 
Good night, everyone. Good night. I just need signatures for the affidavit.